is Alex and I'm a registered dietitian and today I'm going to teach you the eight pillars of sustainable weight loss. So first of all, if you're looking for fads, diets, gimmicks, magic potions, switch this off. That is not what this is about. This is about me teaching you the eight pillars of sustainable weight loss that I have developed over the last 20 years of helping people lose weight, but most importantly, keep it off. Okay, so... The eight pillars of sustainable weight loss. Why listen to me? Why listen to this guy? Why listen to me? So, first of all, what I want you to know is I've been there. I have been there. I've been there myself when I was 15 years of age. I was 15 stone. And I was really unhappy. Really unhappy. I wore dark clothes all the time that were too big for me. I shied away from social events. I was really low in confidence. And it showed, it showed in everything, whether it's trying something new or whether it's meeting people who I didn't know. And I was really badly bullied for it as well. I was called fat and red, fat boy, not slim. I remember I was called. Um, and I'm sure there's people watching this, by the way, who can who can relate or sadly who have also been, been bullied. But I want you to know that there's a way out of it. You don't have to, that doesn't have to be your lot for the rest of your life. And it can change. And that's what I'm going to hopefully teach you to do today. So, as I mentioned, when I was 15, I was 15 stone. When I was 16, I lost four stone in a year. Everything changed. I had more confidence, more get up and go, more energy. I wore clothes that fit me. <laughs> I, um, I started playing sport. I, everything, everything just started to go up. Like, it's not just about the scales. How you feel in yourself, how you feel, how you carry yourself, it affects so much more than just the scales. You know, people don't walk around holding away in scales. It's not about that. It's about how you feel in yourself, how you feel in your clothes, that vibrancy, that vibrancy that I'd never experienced before. So, since that, since I lost the four stone in a year, I've done four degrees to a master's level. An honours degree in sport and exercise science in Aberystwyth in Wales. An MSc in public health and nutrition in Musselburgh, beside Edinburgh in Scotland. I also did an MSc in dietetics in Edinburgh as well. And I've done a postgrad diploma with the International Olympic Committee in sports nutrition. Okay, so I'm also registered with the Healthcare Professional Council. Those of you who are health professionals, I'm sure will have heard of this. It is a governing body to ensure everything I do is legit especially physios, speech and language therapists, you guys will know what the HCPC is, and I am registered with the Healthcare Professionals Council. By the way, I used to work with athletes. I used to work with athletes all over the world, but I stopped, and I'm going to explain why with one question. What do you think gives me more satisfaction? Helping someone knock a half second off a lap, or helping someone reverse diabetes, Get out of the house after being stuck there for five, ten years without even leaving and be around for the grandkids. What do you think gives me more reward? Obviously the latter. And that comes to the why and we'll talk about the importance of the why in a second. So over the last 20 years we've helped 3,000 ladies lose weight sustainably. Keep it off. It's a word you're going to hear me mention and say a lot over the next 20, 30, 40 minutes. Okay, channel four. We've also done work with Channel 4. If you Google lose weight like me, I am incredibly grateful to have been invited to be behind the scenes for that show to ensure everything that was said was legit and of course, most importantly, evidence-based as well. We've also had articles published in the Huffington Post and I'm saying we because it's not just me. We have an entire team of dietitians, psychologists, behavioral change coaches, personal trainers, we have a full MDT, for all those health professionals out there who know what the abbreviation means, a full multidisciplinary team. And to get anything done properly on the long term, you need an MDT. You need an MDT. And I really feel strongly about that. As soon as I feel like I know everything, I know nothing. The more I can be humble enough to be a student by bringing in more people with more qualifications than me, the more we can help people. And that is in line with our mission, which is to help one million people live longer and happier lives. And the only way we do that is with your help. Okay, so first thing, first thing to do is join the group. Every Monday night, I do a weight loss clinic at 7pm, completely complimentary. 
There's loads of free trainings on, on fat loss here, menopause toolkit, morning formula, how to address comfort eating, stress eating, boredom eating. There's a huge list. Anyway, have a scroll, find something that you want, comment underneath that, and of course we'll be in touch and give it to you. So, starting with why. Starting with why. This is big now, okay? People talk about goals all the time. Here's the thing. If you don't have a strong enough why, a goal is not going to be accomplished. It's not going to happen. You need to have a strong reason behind why you're doing something. So why is losing weight sustainably a priority to you now? Pen and paper, please. Clothes don't fit well. That goes back to my journey. I've been through it myself. I know what it's like. Joint problems. Meaning that you can't do as much as you used to be able to do. What happens in the next two years of your life dictates the next 20. What happens in the next two years of your life dictates the next 20. And that's hard hitting, I know, but I'm telling you, I've spoken to so many ladies age 50 to 70 who just feel invisible almost. And they're putting everybody else first. They're coming last down the list. They're not used to asking for help. And they just get comfortable being uncomfortable. That doesn't have to be the case. And if you do have joint problems, if they get worse, your why is going to get bigger than that. It's going to get being unable to play with the grandkids or your nieces and nephews, being unable to travel, being unable to do hobbies that you've been doing for years, whether it's gardening, horse riding, paddle boarding, things you've always wanted to do that haven't done yet. If your joints deteriorate, all of that becomes far more difficult. Family member with heart disease, cancer or diabetes, the big three. Okay, the likelihood is you'll know someone in your immediate family or one of your friends who very sadly has either been diagnosed with cancer, has had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, even a stroke. We don't always get second chances. And oftentimes family members can be a warning sign on what not to do. I don't want you to be a warning sign. I want you to be a role model. That is so important to me. I want you to be a role model. Worried that we won't be here for our kids or grandkids. Or are kids worried that we won't be here? If you have a son or a daughter now that's worried about you, worried about your health, and you're so busy putting everybody else first and saying yes to things all the time, yes, of course, I'll help you. If you can't help yourself first, well, it's very difficult to be there for them emotionally and physically. And I know most kids certainly would before would prefer you to be around than just a will. Sick of being unenthusiastic of attending social events. Have you ever, honestly now, ask yourself really honestly, have you ever been invited to an event where the first thing you've tried to do is make up a reason as to why you can't go? Or have you ever went to an event where you've said yes, but you don't enjoy it because of how you feel about your weight? This is about so much more than the scales. Worried about your health. If we haven't got our health, we haven't got anything. Health is more important than family because if we haven't got our health, we can't be there for our family. Health is, is critical. It's one of the pillars of happiness to talk about in a few moments. So, pillar one. This is a big one now. Avoid the fad diets. Avoiding the fad diets. I'll tell you right now, there is so much or so many charlatans wheeling nonsense with no qualifications out there. Even the term nutritionist, believe it or not, is not a protected term. Anyone who's done a four week course online can call themselves a nutritionist. To be a dietitian, you have to have done four years in university and you have to be registered with the Healthcare Professionals Council as well. Intermittent fasting. This is something that's becoming more and more common. People fast, they only eat for eight or 12 hours of the 24. That means they go 12 or 16 hours completely fasted. Some people can get temporary results from this because they indirectly eat less. However, big however, when we're fasting, we're actually breaking down muscle mass. When that happens, our metabolism hits the floor. When that happens, does it make it easier to lose body fat or harder? Obviously harder. So in the long run, intermittent fasting actually makes it difficult for you to maintain a toned and defined physique. That's really important. Also, it's not social. You don't want to be sitting with your grandkids and say, oh no, nanny doesn't have breakfast. 
You don't want to be setting that example. You don't want to be setting that example. You certainly don't want to have your kids or grandkids asking about what, what diet you're on or what thing you're on now. You don't want to be planting that seed. No carbs after six. <laughs> if, if this was true, what would you do if you're a nurse who works nights? What would you do if you're a nurse who works nights? There is no evidence whatsoever that eating carbohydrates after 6 p.m. has in any way a negative impact on your ability to lose body fat. No evidence. Some people get temporary results from it because ultimately by adding a rule they end up eating less. However, carbohydrates are really important for sleep. So if you don't eat after 6 or don't eat carbs after 6, your sleep won't be as high quality. You won't be as recovered the following day. That gives you a greater risk of injury. And if you get injured, everything gets harder. And I'm sure there's lots of you out there who've had their fair share of injury. Okay? I don't want you to be one of them. I don't want you to be one of them. The keto diet. This is where the gloves come off now. The ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is where we remove carbohydrate and we eat dietary fat and protein. The ketogenic diet was built on one study in the 1980s, so that's like 40 years ago, with five subjects. And to all the scientists out there, you'll be well aware that five subjects is not a sound sample size. Out of those five subjects, one subject showed temporary increases in fat oxidation or burning fat. That was gone after 24 hours, which means there was no difference after 24 hours. That is what the whole thing's built on. But the real reason I'm talking about it is because I've spoken to over a dozen ladies who've had to have their gallbladder removed because of doing keto. I've spoken to over a hundred, over a hundred ladies who've either had bad breath or a build of a plaque in their arteries, high cholesterol because of doing keto. I don't want you to go through that. Do not go through it. Do not put yourself through it. And again, not an example you want to be setting to your family either. Hit training. A little bit of knowledge is dangerous, or something that's half true is also dangerous. So HIIT training burns fat, it leads to the afterburn effect. However, it's massively exaggerated the benefits from this. So people think that if I, if I go HIIT training, if I do a legs, bums and tums or a fat burn class, what will happen is my body will start burning calories at a higher rate while I'm sitting on the couch drinking margaritas and everything will be grand. Not the truth. The increased, the increased metabolism only happens for two hours after the session and it only is increasing by 15%. So you actually only burn more calories for two hours and it's very, very slight, 15% improvement. Very, very slight. I guarantee you, if you do steady state exercise or a brisk walk for 25 minutes, you will get way more out of that in terms of calorie expenditure than doing a 10 minute hit class or a 10 minute hit routine. That's super, super important guys. Okay. High intensity interval training. Okay. Case studies. Me, first of all, me. <laughs> right. I've been there as you can see. So this is actually in Florida on a family holiday where we were at like wet and wild, something like that. And while I'm smiling, half smiling, I feel horrific in this photo. And if you have ever found yourself hiding behind the camera or not being enthusiastic about getting photos, I, I, know, I know how you feel. Since then, obviously my whole life now is helping other people lose weight and keep it off. Speaking of which, Jane Barrett, what a lady. Jane very sadly lost her husband to cancer. And since that, she kind of, what she told me, she felt, well, why bother? Why bother? And then obviously the weight went on and that impacted so many aspects of her life. Jane has now transformed everything. Like, look at her here. Look at the smile. And she's now, believe it or not, become a fully qualified personal trainer. So much time for you, Jane. It was lovely speaking to you yesterday, by the way. <laughs> I hope you're watching this back. Amanda. Amanda used to be a bodybuilder. And there's people here, I'm sure, who are either personal trainers, Zumba teachers, dance teachers, even dietitians who came to us for help. 
and they feel, oh, I should know better or, oh, I, I know this stuff or I did home economics or I should know better. I'm well clued in. And a little bit of knowledge can be dangerous because A, the evidence changes. What's worked in the past stops working in terms of hormonal changes for you, but also evidence changes in terms of what's recommended now is very different to what was recommended 10, 20 years ago. Massively different. Amanda felt just low, really, really low, really low. And she, again, she felt I should know better. But she came, got help, and obviously look what she's done. <laughs> she looks incredible, absolutely incredible. Okay, why you should never eat and how to avoid hunger. Why you should never eat and how to avoid hunger. You should never eat avocados. <laughs> Jokes. <laughs> Only joking, guys. I don't eat avocados. You know why? Because I don't like them. I don't like them. You should never eat what you don't like. If you're forcing down food you don't like, if you've bought a copy and place meal plan off the internet and you're eating foods that you don't like, like for me, cottage cheese, avocado, ah, it's not going to work because you're not going to sustain it. If you don't enjoy it or you feel deprived, you're not going to sustain it. Only eat what you enjoy. Screw chicken and broccoli. What I mean by this is screw bland foods. I don't want you to have bland foods. I want you to be able to enjoy flavors, enjoy convenience, enjoy eating. It's a huge pleasure in life. It is for me anyway. So if you like chicken and broccoli, go for it, but make sure it's not bland, make sure it's flavorsome. Just because I want you to enjoy it. You have to enjoy it. If I was an optician, I wouldn't give you my glasses. This means it has to be personalized. What you are prescribed or what you eat has to be built around your likes with the avoidance of your dislikes. Otherwise, you're being set up to fail. Fiber. Fiber. Having high fiber foods fill you up. To put it very simply, it means you're less likely to get hungry. Less likely to get hungry. This could be oats, whole grains, whole wheats. It could be Weetabix. It could be vegetables, fibrous vegetables. But fiber is a, is a critical piece here to keep you full. Also to reduce your risk of bowel cancer. I very sadly lost my grandfather from bowel cancer and my wife Babs lost um, her friend Jordan from bowel cancer at the age of 30, which is horrific. So um, we've raised loads of money for this, by the way. We've raised like 44,000 pounds sterling for bowel cancer to again improve the screening procedures in the UK. And actually the money we raised has helped improve the screening procedures in the UK which has impacted 18 million people, which I'm really proud of. And I'm proud of everyone who's watching this, who took part in our charity events. And um, it's a really, really incredible cause and an important one. We don't just raise money for bowel cancer either. We've done it for Make-A-Wish, Magic Breakfast and the Stroke Association. And we've raised over 100,000 pounds for charity at the time of this video. Food displacement. Food displacement. If you fill up on lower calorie foods, you're less likely to be hungry and fill up on higher calorie foods. Example, roast dinner. Challenge for you now, and I want you to write this down. Always serve the vegetables first on your plate. Put the veg on first. Don't go with the traditional meat first. Put the veg on first. Really important. Try having more roasted parsnips and less roast potatoes. Not no roast potatoes. No jokes here, guys. I know I'm Irish. I love a spud, but I want you to be able to have a full plate and if you do it with lots of vegetables then it means that you're able to feel full feel satisfied and enjoy your meal try gravy that's not coming from the juices of the meat try one calorie spray in terms of roasting your vegetables your roast potatoes rather than dosing it in oil you'd be surprised the impact that makes by the way you'd really surprised the impact that makes food displacement another little trick for you guys on your plate what i'd like you to do is I'd like you to always make sure that 50% of your plate is vegetables. And another rule that you could add in, which I do a lot, is have fruit or veg with every meal. Have fruit or veg with every meal, or actively include foods. We're always talking about excluding foods, removing this, that's bad. There's no good and bad, everything in moderation. So what if you actively included it? Think of your favorite fruit. And if you don't like any fruit, try more of them. Try new fruit a week until you find one that you like. Actively have an apple a day, high in fiber, high in fiber. Again, good for your bowel, keeps you full, can minimize the chance of you overeating. Use your handbag as a little weapon for fruit. 
Hydrated. I'm going to use that as a cue. <laughs> Stay hydrated. Oftentimes what happens is we mistake de dehydration for hunger. We think we're hungry, we're not, we're dehydrated. Aim for two to three litres of water a day or a fluid a day. It doesn't have to be water. You can use or orange cordial, blackcurrant, make sure it's sugar free. You can use tea and coffee. People often think it doesn't count. It does count. The only times it would not count would be espressos because the mild diuretic effect, the mild diuretic effect of caffeine leads to you peeing more. <laughs> so if you have an espresso, you're having an awful lot of caffeine with very little fluid. And if you have it in a coffee, the fluid counteracts the diuretic effect. But if you have it in an espresso, it doesn't. So FYI, hope that helps. And by the way, with coffees, there's loads of ways you can make them a little bit less calorific. For example, I have a milk former downstairs and I foam skimmed milk and have a coffee machine and I add two sweeteners. And no, sweetener does not cause cancer. It is a myth that aspartame causes cancer. It was a study done on rats, small sample size, and they were given bucket loads, as in like, there were so many things wrong with that study. I'm never gonna stand behind aspartame causing cancer. It does not. Sweetener does not have problems behind it, okay? It would not be recommended by us as dietitians if that was the case. Case studies. By the way, guys, the reason why I'm talking about case studies here is because I want you to have hope. Hope that your current situation is not your lot. Deborah Hunt has lost over six stone, reversed diabetes, her asthma is now dormant, and her blood pressure is normalized. She's a rock star, absolute rock star. But the beautiful thing about Deborah is she still has wobbles. She still has wobbles, still has occasional self doubt. And then she obviously reaches out and then she reassures other people. But she's a real leader because by being brave enough to hold her hand up, ask for help, say she's having a tough day, a tough week, having the courage to ask for help, which loads of people don't do. We think it's a sign of weakness. It's not. It's a sign of strength, in my opinion. Deborah, you're, you're, you're a hell of an individual. Maria Pombo. Six and a half stone weight loss. Look at that smile. She's an incredible dancer, by the way. Maria Pombo runs her own company and she said to me several times how much more confident she is now in presenting. I'm so proud of you, Maria. Val Brister. Val Brister has osteoarthritis, a limitation she's refused to lie down to. I can't do this because of dot, dot, dot. Okay, what can we do? Okay, what can we do? And Val Brister is a perfect example of what can be done. Look at her. And she's so strong, by the way. She can do chin-ups. Chin-ups. Convenience. <laughs> Again, I don't want it to be difficult. We have to make it easy and simple. That's a trend you're going to hear me saying a lot. Easy and simple. Convenience. This reminds me <laughs> of me and my wife Babs. Now, at the time of this video, we actually have a five-month-old called Sky. Have a scroll in the group. You'll see some photographs of her, I'm sure. Um, so I can relate to the picture. Only one. I'm not sure how she's managing four or five. I can see there on a dog. So convenience, if it's not easy or not simple, you're not going to maintain it. Traveling. We have a client called Toby who we help who travels to the States every two weeks. We have to ensure that we help him in changing environments. I'm going to list a load of things now that could be positive suggestions. Pen and paper with the ready guys. Please write these down. Never leave the home hungry. Never leave the home hungry. Write that down, please, guys. By the way, if I'm going too fast, as I'm sure I am, I'm a fast talker, um, rewatch it a few times, okay? That might help you as well. Rewatch it a few times. So, never leave the home hungry. Typically, we have about a three hour window before we get hungry again, three to four hours. If you leave the house and you eat just before you leave, that means you've got more time before you need to make a food choice again. Really powerful. Have backups. Your glove box and your handbag should be full of non-perishables. Protein bars, fruit perhaps for the handbag, not in the glove box, <laughs> but in the handbag, you forget about them, but in the handbag for sure. Plan meals in advance. Know where you're traveling to. Know what's available. What's at the train station? What's at the airport? What could you fill up on? How could you actively include fruit or a smoothie? Protein bars, what could you have? Could you have a... A steak with the fat cut off with salad. Could you have a Caesar salad? If you have a Caesar salad, by the way, try this trick. Dressing on the side, 
fork dip it into the dressing then the fork into the salad and the meat and the last thing to touch your lips will be the dressing it'll give you the perception that you're having more dressing than you actually are try it it's a bit of a weapon and if any of this is helpful guys do me a favor hit the share button share this on facebook i am 100 percent certain there'll be someone in your circle who is struggling even if it's not their weight their fitness their health could be mindset as well which we'll cover in a few moments and if you help even just one person then all of this will be worth it all of this will be worth it if you're traveling with a friend make sure that you tell them what you're doing two ways of doing it one with humor okay just so you know i became a little bit of a fitness fanatic at the moment i'm big into my fitness and my strength so there'll be no mcdonald's there'll be no mcdonald's there'll be no high calorie foods now okay I'm on a, I want a plan, I want to stick to it, I'm doing well, I don't want to undo my results, okay? Right, are we on the same team? Brilliant, okay, perfect. Quite assertively, and then you can just fight back if they give you any pushback. Or, if that's not your style. Mary, I know we're going away this weekend, there's something I want to say to you though that is important to me. First of all, I want this to be, a, I want this to be an amazing holiday, I want this to be an amazing trip. But there's something I haven't told you, and that is at the moment I'm I'm really trying, I'm really trying to improve my health, my fitness, and maybe use health and fitness because sometimes if you say weight, what happens is people say, "Oh, don't be silly, you've nothing to worry about." There's people out there bigger than you. All that does is trivialize your struggles, and that doesn't help. I'm sure lots of you can relate to that. So I'm doing really well, and I need you to be in my corner. I need your help. So do you mind if I choose a few places that we can eat? Obviously, I'm still going to have a drink with you. I'm not going to go out and not have a drink. But I'd rather not drink until after lunch. I'd rather not drink until after 6 p.m. And that's important to me. I also want to be able to have 15 minutes in the morning to myself. Just so I can go for a walk, clear my head. It's really important to me. Or we can walk together. I'd love this to be a bit of an active holiday. Can I rely on you to support me with that? It's important to me. Excellent. Brilliant. I heard a horror story from a lady last week who said that she went up to the went to the bathroom, she'd ordered a salad and her friends to try and sabotage her results, changed her order, ordered fish and chips for her. Because they didn't want her to succeed, or they didn't want her to ruin their holiday. They're the kind of people you have to get out of your life. Think right now, write down three names of people who are toxic, who are not adding to your life, they're taking away from it. And if they're family members, distance yourself. You can't remove them, but distance yourself. And I hope this helps, guys. We don't use, we don't have hours to cook. I have a little baby downstairs. I'm sure you'll hear a cry at some stage. We don't have hours to cook. Make it convenient. Buy chopped veg. It buys you back time. Yes, it's a bit more expensive, but we have to put a value on our time. You can always earn more money, but we can't make more time. Make it as easy as possible for you to make a positive choice and actually count up what you've spent on impulse buys in Tesco Expresses or M&S's or takeaways or deliveroos in the last 12 months. You'd be surprised how much you can save if you make that movement from spending money on your health rather than on high calorie foods or on alcohol, for example. And by the way, we'll get to alcohol. <laughs> I do drink, I'm sure you can imagine with an Irish accent. Fortified products. Fortified products. So, there's loads of foods out there that have got things added to them. Orange juice with added calcium. Weetabix has got added iron. A lot of breakfast cereals have iron added to it. Yogurt has added protein. Great little hack for you guys is try and have protein with every single meal. It keeps you satiated. It allows you to maintain muscle mass. That allows you to maintain a fast metabolism and know you won't get bulky unless you start taking steroids. And I'm hoping by now you feel confident that we're not going to recommend something silly like that. Okay, we can't spend our lives counting grains of rice. <laughs> Have you ever done a program with someone before where they've asked you to measure every single gram of food? It's not realistic and it's not sustainable. Yes, it's good at the start to increase your awareness of portion size. But you have to be taught how to intuitively eat where you can eat with your eye. That means that you're not counting grains of rice for the rest of your life. Life's too short. We haven't got time for that. Haven't got time for that. If you drop two dress sizes or when you drop two dress sizes, you want to make sure and write down what that is, by the way, now. Let's set that as a goal. 
You want to make damn sure that you have the time to enjoy that. Go out, do more things, show it off, wear new clothes, buy clothes from a place that you've never bought clothes before from. Not buy them off the internet, not walk past a fitting room or a mirror or a car window reflection and feel bad about yourself anymore. More success. Tina runs her own company. Same blue dress, different person in it. Carol Payton. Carol Payton works as a cardiovascular nurse. Her why is that she lost a family member who very sadly passed away at the age she, she was before she started her weight loss journey. She had a family member who was a warning sign. She didn't want to be a warning sign. Look at her now, look at that smile. Titsy, Titsy, you vibrant human being. How are you doing? Down from, <laughs> she can't hear me. <laughs> no, I'm talking to her. Titsy, down from a size 14 to a size 10, now maintaining that. Back running 10Ks, back running half marathons. Some of you maybe have been runners in the past or athletes in the past, and you feel like you've lost part of your identity. This is how you can regain this, okay? And well, there's loads of ways I'll walk you through in a few moments on how to do that. Don't deprive yourself. Life's too short. Do not deprive yourself. Only had the one glass of wine. Yes, but it was a chalice. <laughs> so, Irish weddings. Any of you have any Irish relatives? An Irish wedding is a three-day event. It's a proper event. So, I'm going to tell you right now what I do for an Irish wedding that happens on a Friday. Pen and paper at hand, please, guys. This could be any event. It could be a festival. It could be a holiday. Weddings on the Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I'm going to train at home or at the gym. 80% 80 of the people that we help actually don't go to a gym. They train at home. They train at home, which is really, really important. And I want you to be well aware of that. Really important. So with that in mind, with that in mind, you don't always have to train four or five days a week. A lot of people that we help actually train for, well, three, three days a week, 20 minutes max. Very, very doable. Very, very doable. Just so you know. I want you to be fully aware of that. What I do then is I, I bank steps and I bank calories. That means that I eat 200 less calories every day on the run up to the wedding. And then also it would mean that I actively do four to 5,000 extra steps every day on the run up to the wedding. The morning of the wedding, I will go for a long walk or I will train. When I go to the wedding, I will set a few rules for myself. I will make sure I buy more rounds. I be extra generous. I can have a pint of water then every time I'm at the bar. I will drink cider and fill the glass with ice. That's a sneaky way of getting more water. I will not drink alcohol until I've already had the meal. I will not have three courses. I will have either a starter or a dessert. I'll pick probably dessert for me. It'll be a cheesecake all the time, nine times out of 10. Quick one on that, by the way. If you want to make life easier for yourself, have your desserts, but plan them in advance. Have them out, not in the house. You can't go back for seconds if you're at a restaurant or it's harder to do it. Especially if you've got a second spoon and you're sharing with someone else. It's making it harder for you to overeat portion size by you doing it in a restaurant versus you bringing something into the house. Make it as easy for yourself as possible. Remove things in the house right now that are not helping you. Meals out, just covered that, perfect. Meals out, lots of tri tricks and tips. Again, making sure that you speak to the person you're going with. You get to choose where you're going. If it was a burrito bar, for example, have a burrito, no rice, no sour cream, and then extra vegetables, half the meat, half the meat, small amount of cheese. You've cut the calories by 30% there immediately. Boom. Pizza. Loads of pizzas out there now come with a hole in the middle to add salad. Pizza Hut, ZZ's, have a lower calorie pizza. Chili con carne, ask for the, the rice on the side. Spoon in four spoons of rice, ask for extra, extra vegetables. Oftentimes with chili con carnes or with curries, what happens is we over portion the rice. We fill the plate with rice and then we put the chili on top. If you're doing that, try do a ring of rice with the chili in the middle. Give us the perception of you having more food than you actually are. Slow down when you're eating. Talk, knife and fork down, plenty of fluid. You can do this, I have so much faith in you. How to avoid guilt when having high calorie foods. Plan it in advance. Don't do it off the cuff. Plan it, look forward to it, have it guilt free because if you do it off the cuff, it'll just dent your armor. You'll start to feel 
guilty, you obviously will beat yourself up and you'll forget all of the positive things that you achieved in that week. I don't want you to go through that. I don't want you to go through that. And if any of this is helpful, guys, please hit the share button. I guarantee you there's someone out there struggling in some way. And just because they're not raising their hand does not mean they don't need help. Either people are unaware of the problem or they're not brave enough to ask for help to address the problem, which is why I'm building this webinar. Sonia. Sonia, look at this before and after, by the way, guys. Look at her midsection. You notice an awful lot of the ladies here have had massive, massive changes in their midsection in particular. <clears throat> Sonia <clears throat> was sick of her family making comments that she had to lose weight. But when she decided to do it, she didn't do it for anybody else. She did it for herself. Chris Diamond, Christine. Chris Diamond has fibromyalgia, pain, low energy, refuse to lie down to that. And there's so many people here with health conditions, guys. And that doesn't mean you can't lose weight sustainably. We've helped people in wheelchairs. We've even helped double amputees. There's always a way. And as soon as I lie down to your limitations, it means I can't help you anymore. The second I lie down to your limitations, I'll always acknowledge them. I'll always meet you where you are. But if I lie down to them, I can't help you. And then nothing changes. Caroline Kirkland. Caroline Kirkland is a medical consultant. Caroline Kirkland came to us for help. Had a bit of a wobble that night. Says, I can't do it. I haven't got time. Start to have self-limiting beliefs. We argue for why we can't do something. I'm not used to put myself first. And then I asked Caroline, well, what's the reasons why you want to do it in the first place? Well, my 10-year-old, Ewan. I want to be there for him. Massive why. That why is so big, it crushes the doubt. Crushes the doubt. Caroline Kirkland has not just lost the weight and sustained it three years later. She's now joined the TSD team and is working as a medical consultant for TSD, for us. What she's doing now is increasing the awareness of how you can have more warning signs for diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer, and what you can do to be able to be proactive with your health, not just curative. An amazing human. Excuse the swearing here, guys, but I love this. When you absolutely feckin' refuse to give up. A kid here who literally has an oxygen tank strapped to him. There's always a way. Mindset and behaviour change is everything. Absolutely everything, guys. And I want you to be well aware of that. The five-minute journal. I have one. Where do I have one? <laughs> I'll get an old one. <laughs> I have got six, seven, eight of these that I have documented over the last, what, four, five, six years. The five minute journal is something that's for people who don't like journaling. It's fast, it's quick. It gives you a quote at the start of the day. You write down three things you're grateful for. That changes your perspective, your perspective, your perspective of your life. Three things that would make today great. Three big goals for yourself. Three big goals for yourself. It also allows you to write down two positive affirmations. And I want you to do that right now. Write down two things right now about yourself that you're proud of. Are you kind? Are you empathetic? Are you a good listener? Write down two positive things about yourself right now. Really important. There's enough people in this world to put you down. I don't want you to be one of them. Write down two positive things. End of the day, then you write down three big wins, three things that you've accomplished. And then at night, you also write down two things that you've learned. What have you learned today? What have you learned? That's how you keep getting better. As soon as we stop learning, we go backwards. Very simple. Don't tell people about your dreams. Show them. I'm sure lots of you will know people here who perhaps don't support you. Could be a partner. People who stand in your way. People who say, oh, don't be silly, you've got no weight to lose, you're fine the way you are. Or people who are insecure and don't want you to succeed. Or people who oversimplify the problem and say things like, oh, just eat less, move more, it's not rocket science. If it was that simple, there wouldn't be so many million people in the world struggling. And all that does when someone says that is make you feel like a failure. Eat less, move more does not take into account metabolism. Hormonal changes, comfort eating, stress eating, boredom eating, medical conditions, joint problems, your age, 
So many things are not taken into account. Your time budget. If it was that simple, there wouldn't be so many people in this world struggling. Four pillars of happiness. Relationships, purpose, progress and health. I want you to write this down, please. Relationships, purpose, progress and health. Relationships, purpose, progress and health. If you're more confident, you will have better relationships because you will stand up for yourself more. You'll get rid of toxic people. You'll attract positive people. You will not be in the corner at a party hiding away. You'll stand in the middle. You'll be more confident. Purpose. What is your purpose now? My purpose is to be the best dad I can possibly be. To be the best husband I can possibly be. The best son. The best brother. And to help one million people live longer and happier lives. That's my purpose. And that purpose enables me to shape my actions every single day based on that purpose. What's yours? Think really hard now. What's your purpose? It could be to be an incredible mum, to be around for your grandkids, to give back to the world. Our core values here is give back, care, help a million people live longer and happier lives. That's it. That's it. Your purpose could be you could change your purpose. You could do voluntary work now. You could enjoy your retirement because you've worked so hard all your life. You can put yourself first as a purpose to allow yourself to be there for the people who matter. You can give back with, at a soup kitchen. You can volunteer. So many things you can do. You can drive your business up by focusing on the vehicle that drives it, which is you. Your health, your confidence, your energy levels as well. Energy impacts everything. If you have more energy, you're not double checking patient notes. If you have more energy, you're more assertive, you handle stress better, you get more done faster so you get home to the family faster, you have more job satisfaction, you have an improved perception of your current situation and you get more done. Energy drives everything but we don't talk about it because you can't see it in the before and after photo but I want you to think about it because if we remove all nutritional gaps and optimize your sleep, your energy skyrockets and everything changes, everything changes. Progress. You have to see yourself progressing with something. Hands up here who's had an IT problem, spent an hour trying to fix it, nothing's changed, you haven't progressed at all. Very frustrating. If you see yourself progressing with something, that makes a massive impact. That could be like cleaning the kitchen, for example. Speaking of which, I want you to write this down. My housework will never come before me. My housework will never come before me. I never want you... I never want you to say no to your walk or your exercise or your steps because you've got a dirty kitchen. The housework can wait. You're more important. You're more important. Health. Health, health, health. Without health, we haven't got anything. Without health, we can't be there for our family. If we don't make time for our health, if we don't prioritize it, we're going to have to make time for illness. The difference is not everybody gets to choose. Not everybody gets to choose. Not everybody gets to choose. Your why. I'm going back over this because it's so important. Why is making this a priority so important to you? Why are you not willing to lie down to your current situation? Why are you not going to move into acceptance? Will you throw in the towel and say it can't be fixed? Why are you going to keep fighting? Why are you going to prioritize this now? If, if we have literally helped thousands of women lose weight and keep it off, is there any real reason as to why you can't have that as well? Everyone is different in some ways, but no one is so special that it can't be resolved. And I want you to really let that sink in. So important, guys. The dangers of positive self-talk. We talk ourselves out of doing things all the time. We say things like, I'm not that big. People out there who are bigger than me. I've got more important things to worry about than my weight. I've lost weight before I can do it again. All of these statements, let me know if it hits home. All of these statements, they trivialize the problem. If we trivialize the problem, do we improve the urgency to change it or do we reduce it? We reduce the urgency in changing it. Or worse, we go back to doing things that work temporarily in the past, which means you keep going round in circles and that does two things. One, it damages your metabolism. And two, psychologically regaining the weight is absolutely crushing. Absolutely crushing. 
Do not allow positive self-talk to be a reason as to why you stay stuck, stagnant, frustrated. Do not allow that to be something. Don't talk yourself about having a better life. Behaviour change. You need to come first. Mic drop. <laughs> you do though. You need to come first. And I know that we're brought up in a world where we say, oh, treat thy neighbour as you'd like to be treated. 100% in Ireland, UK, definitely. But we're never taught how to treat ourselves. You can't pour out of an empty vessel. And you've heard the statement, put on your own oxygen mask first. If you keep coming last down the line, you're setting an example to your kids or grandkids, they should come last. If you don't make time for yourself, it means you're less likely to have a long life with less illness, which means you're less likely to be around for the people who matter. That is so important, guys. So important. You have to come first. And you're not going to wake up and all of a sudden, right, I'm going to put myself first all the time. You have to do it incrementally. You don't always have to come first, but you, you can't be last. You should come second more often and first occasionally. Definitely. That's really important. And I'm sure lots of you have got loads going on with elderly parents who need minding. With perhaps your son or your daughter having a struggle with their mental health. There's so many so many struggles I hear you guys go through every single day. The way to be there for that person is to carve out time for you. That is so, so important, guys. So important. How do we make everything easier? We have to find ways of making it easier, not harder. That is so, so important. Easier, not harder. Easier, not harder. Okay? How do we do that? You don't want to overcomplicate things. A few tips here. Making rules, setting boundaries makes it easier. Uh, a boundary would be, do not bring your phone to bed. The phone stays out of the room. Make another rule could be, I don't clean the kitchen until I've done my exercise in the morning. <laughs> I don't scroll on social media until I've got my steps in. What rules can you set right now? What can you do to make it easier for you to lose weight? Whenever someone calls me, I go for a walk, walk and talk. Habit stacking, that's what that is. Walking and talking. Someone calls you, go for a walk, get some steps in at the same time. <clears throat> when the kettle's boiling, do push-ups against the wall. Habit stacking. If you're stopped at traffic lights when you're driving, that's a time to stop, chug some water. Make a rule that you never have a meal without a pint of water. Ice water, flavoured water. Habit stacking. Adding friction, making it harder to do things that don't serve you, making it more difficult. If you always stop by a shop, pick up a bottle of wine on the way home from work, how can you drive home a different way to avoid that shop? How Could you ring somebody at the time when you're passing the shop to ensure that it's harder for you to stop because you're on the phone, so you're not going to want to be clinking a bottle of wine at a checkout while you're on the phone with that person? How can you make it more difficult for you to do that? Adding friction to behaviours that are not serving you. Removing people that are not helping you. Spending less time with them. Clearing your cupboards of food that are not serving you. Telling the grandkids, in terms of having something sweet, we're going to go out to get it. We don't keep it in the house. Make that a rule now. Removing friction to be able to make a decision that serves you. Sleeping in the gear that you're going to train in in the morning. Your, work, your walking gear or your workout gear. That makes it easier. If you do have a home gym or dumbbell set, have it clean and tidy so it's nicer and easier to go in and actually use it. <clears throat> How can you remove friction? How can you make it easier? How can you make all of this easier? Really important. We have to make it easier, we have to make it simple. The ABC approach, write this down, ABC approach. Antecedents, behavior, consequence. Antecedents, the boss was rude to you, shouted at you. The behavior. <clears throat> You felt low. You didn't stand up for yourself. You walked out and you got high calorie foods. The consequence, you felt guilty and you felt that you've undone all your hard work. Change the script now. Antecedents we can't always change unless <laughs> you level up your energy and your confidence so much that you steal your boss's job. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's the goal. But if you can't change the antecedents, the behavior is 
Were you aware that you're raising? Are you aware that you're raising your voice at me? Are you aware? Are you aware that you're pointing at me? Okay, so these are the list of priorities that I have. This is what I've been doing. If you could kindly maybe guide me here, what I shouldn't have been doing first and what I should be doing first, just so in future I'll know what's a priority to you. And also mirroring. If someone says you're useless, repeat back to them, useless. And they're going to say sometimes, yes, useless. Were you aware that you're speaking to me like that? Yes, of course I am. Say less. Brevity is very powerful. Don't stand for it. Do not stand for it. We can change the behaviour, change the consequence then. It means you walk tall. You get treated with more respect. You're not overlooked at work anymore. That's huge, by the way. You, you get promoted. You get paid your worth. So many ways this can benefit you. It's not just about the scales. Definitely. The consequence, you go out, you go for a walk, you feel proud, you stay on track. And once you've done that once, it comes to you easier the next time. Easier the next time. And if any of this is helpful, guys, please hit the share button. I hope it's helpful. I want it to be. I really do. Secret weapon, progressive overload. Okay. Progressive overload. So... You can see here there's a young lad carrying a calf, then a small bullock, then a bull. By carrying this animal every day, the animal grows slowly and then he keeps getting stronger to deal with the new weight or the new resistance. No worries, I'm not going to ask you to carry an animal on your shoulders. But what I will say is if we do not practice progressive overload, which is gradually increasing the resistance, whether it's doing more repetitions or a heavier weight or resistance bands we have to find a way of improving or intensifying the resistance how often here hands up be really honest now with yourself have you went to a gym or done an exercise movement and done one two three four five six seven eight nine ten job done that's it if you just stop at ten because you're used to stopping at ten and you've stopped increasing the load you will plateau and if you stay at a plateau long enough when you're working hard not seeing results eventually you'll quit you'll think why do i bother and that is when things become very difficult. Success. Celebrations. Mish, what an individual. Mish is a burlesque dancer, not just for a living, by the way, but she used to practice burlesque dancing. She's also a mental health nurse. Mish is a hell of a character, a hell of a character, but she was putting on a front in terms of how she was feeling about her weight, and that's exhausting, putting on a front. Look at her now. Literally size 16 to a size 8. Debbie McQueen, a family friend. Debbie, I have so much time for you. Debbie's over in Canada. Debbie literally said, if I don't do something, I'm going to end up in a wheelchair. She now has refused to let that be re the reality. She runs her own business. She's more confident, more assertive, and can play with her grandkids easily. Gemma Bridges works in finance. Gemma also is an avid horse rider. Loves horse riding. She was afraid she would no longer be able to continue that sport. She's now a horse rider, yes, but also a power lifter. She looks incredible. Gemma, so proud of you. Seven limiting beliefs, or seven, pillar seven. Seven limiting beliefs and obstacles. Things that will stand in your way. Things that can stop you from getting to where you want to get to. Procrastination. Now's not the right time. I've got too much going on. Um, what else? Christmas is coming up. There's rising energy bills. Interest rates are up. We talk ourselves out of doing things all of the time. All of the time. But here's the thing. There's always going to be something. And what is going to make more sense for long-term weight loss? Waiting until you have a four-month clear path with no interruptions? Or learning how to lose weight sustainably when you do have things thrown in the mix. Because here's the thing, Christmas is gonna come next year and so are holidays. And there's no point spending lots of money on a holiday and then not properly enjoying yourself when you're there or not enjoying photos or not being able to, or having some of it even been taken away by you thinking about your weight. I don't want that to be the case. Fear of failure, this is huge, fear of failure. 
Actually, a little exercise for you guys. I want you to get a brand new page of paper, line down the middle of the page. Top left hand side of the page, I want you to write down the word fear. Right hand side of the page, write down the word fear. <laughs> I think I've just blocked out all the light, have I? <laughs> There's my Mona Lisa. Fear, fear. <laughs> Apologies, guys. So, left hand side, I want you to write down fear. Fear of failure. Fear of failure. Right hand side of the page, I want you to write down fear of missing out on life. Fear of shying away into the background. Fear of being invisible. Fear of wearing dark clothes for the rest of your life. Fear of living in leggings. Fear of not presenting with confidence. Fear of being a bad role model. Fear of not being around for your grandkids. Fear of losing a limb if you're diabetic or losing your sight. Fear of having a stroke or a heart attack. Fear of losing your independence and having to become a burden on your family. Having to be minded by your family rather than paying for, for, for care. A lady, a lady last week told me it was like two grand a week to pay for their personal care. That's mental. That's mental. I don't want you to go through that. And I know I'm raising my voice here, guys, but I'm, I'm really passionate about this because I know what happens if you don't try. I know what happens if you lie down to fear because here's the thing. You're going to have fear either way. But as Mish would say, feel the fear, do it anyway. Because the only difference between all those rock stars and I, and I don't want to put them on a pedestal. They're incredible ladies, but they're also ordinary ladies. And what I mean by that is they're the same fears. But the only difference between where they are now and, and where someone else would be who still has struggles is they're not willing to lie down to their fears. They're moving forward regardless of them. And that's so important, guys. Unsupported family members. I can help you. I can help you lose the weight. Sometimes it does not work when it's too close to home. Or don't be silly. You've got nothing to lose. Just eat less, move more, downplaying the problem, trivialising it. Sometimes in life it's better to show someone what you've done rather than persuade them on what you're going to do. What that does is that ensures that no one is planting a seed of doubt in your mind saying, oh, here she goes again. That doesn't help. That makes all of it harder. If it's important to you, it's important. If it's important to you, it's important. Low self-worth. Low self-worth. Again, hands up or comment below and say, I've struggled with self-worth if at any stage you have. It's very, very common. If you keep putting everybody else first, this is the result. You have low self-worth. And actually, another great diagram I've got here, guys. I'm sure you're very excited. Um, with low self-worth is I want you to draw like a fork in the road. See there? Very, very, the lighting is shocking here. A fork in the road. Low self-worth in the left fork. High self-worth in the right fork. Okay, first of all, you're not going to wake up one morning and have high self-worth. You have to work at it. And the way that you work at it and the way that you improve your self-worth is by doing actions that dictate that you've got a higher self-worth. Make decisions based on where you're going, not based on where you are now. To be the person you want to be in six months, you have to make decisions now based on where they would be, what they would do. The person who doesn't procrastinate, doesn't put themselves down, doesn't speak badly to themselves. That's so important, by the way. So many of you out there speak bad to themselves. I can't. I'm not good enough. Stop that. I'm not there yet, but I'm on my way. I'm not there yet, but I'm trying my best. I'm not there yet, but I'm stacking the odds in my favour. Change how you speak to yourself. Low self-worth only improves if you change how you speak to yourself and you do actions that complement or improve your self-worth. Waiting until you've got higher self-worth is like not having your first driving lesson until you already know how to drive. It doesn't happen overnight. It happens from actions. It happens one step at a time. One step at a time. Not coming first. We've talked about this. This is so, so important. If you really and genuinely want to be there for your family in every sense, you are first got to be there for yourself. The last thing you want is regrets or I could have done more. Even with cancer, like I'm sure you're well aware, a huge, a huge indicator of a higher risk of getting cancer is struggling with your weight. 
if you address that, you have a lower risk. You have a lower risk of getting cancer. And there's loads of you out here. You could even be going through cancer treatment. You could be having knee surgeries, hip replacements. Regardless of your condition, I guarantee you this, your ability to get through it, your ability to be strong for a surgery or to optimize the recovery after the surgery, that all improves if you prioritize yourself, you put yourself first and you double down on your health, your fitness, your strength and your mindset. Celebrations. Nikki Reynolds said to me, the one line, Alex, that you said that hit home the most was if you don't make time for health, you're going to have to make time for illness. And I really believe that. And look at Nikki now. Look at her midsection. Unbelievable. Denny Phillips. Denny, Denny Phillips, obviously, as you can see here, is in a mobility, was in a mobility scooter. She was told by doctors she wouldn't walk again. She's now not just walking, but at the age of 69, completed Tough Mudder and is about to do a skydive. What a lady. Very sadly, Denny has lost her husband to cancer recently. So we've been helping her through it, our whole team. And um, I'm going to go off a bit of a tangent here, but people ask me, Alex, why, why do you work like long hours? Why do you put so much into your work? It's because it's not work. It's not work if it's in line with your purpose and it's not work if you genuinely feel like you're making a difference. And when I speak to Denny, that is, it's all worth it. Everything, every, it's, all, it's all worth it. You're amazing, Denny, and I hope you're watching this back. I do hope you're watching it. Anne McCaig. Anne, Anne McCaig. Sorry, guys. Anne McCaig has lost seven stone. Seven stone. She's in the west of Scotland from Troon. Look at that smile. It's filling her face. Anne McCaig, I'm so proud of you. Anne McCaig was someone who didn't leave the house that often. Now she's going out, meeting people, socialising. You've changed everything. Barbara Barr, if you're watching this as well, has also done that. Barbara Barr never left the house for 10 years because of anxiety. She's now drastically improved that and not just leaving the house, attended a social event with over 100 people that we did for charity a few years ago. Everything can change, guys. Nothing is set in stone. This is not your lot. Accountability. Professional support. Three times more likely to succeed if you bring a friend and you use this group. Okay? Bring a friend with you. Reason why it's so important, so invite someone to this group, hit the join button, is because... You then have a line of communication with somebody else who's also moving in the right direction, health focused, self development focused. Someone who also cares about what's going to happen down the line. Someone who also wants to stack the odds in their favour to having a longer and happier life. Not just about living longer, but staying mobile and independent for longer. Invite someone, do this with them. Another reason people ask for support and help is they've got temporary results in the past. They've tried Slimming World, Weight Watchers, Noom, all these things, and they want a permanent solution. If it hasn't worked long term, it hasn't worked. If it hasn't worked long term, it hasn't worked. Empathetic and evidence-based support has to be. It can't be a stick approach. You can't be beaten with a stick. We have to meet you where you are. Give you tough love if that's what you respond to. But most importantly, empathy. <laughs> empathy is so important. So important. Accountability, being held accountable. We have some people who communicate with us every single day. Some people once a week. It depends on the person. People are different. Clarity. I want you to have clarity in a world of conflicting information. And I'm hoping you've learned at least three things from this webinar so far. Look in the sheet you have in front of you. Hopefully you've at least three things that you've learned. There's so much nonsense out there. I want you to have clarity. Clarity is a sense of freedom. Freedom that you know that you're on the right path. Why I have a coach. I have a coach. There's no point in me sitting here and talking to you about the importance of being humble enough to be a student if I can't be a student myself. I have to lead by example. I have to practice what I preach. As soon as we believe we know everything, we know nothing. That is why I have a coach. Is why I'll always have coaches and mentors because I want to keep growing. I don't want to stagnate. I want to keep learning. I want to stay physically sharp and mentally sharp as I get older. That's really important to me. 98% success rate. We have a 98% success rate. 2% of people that we work with don't get results. 
And I'm saying that to you now because obviously I do not want you to fall into that 2%. The only way that happens is if you're not honest. You tell us something is great when it's not. If you tell us you're struggling, we make adaptations, we change it accordingly to suit you and your lifestyle and your time budget. That's why we have such a high success rate. But that's not what this is about. If you do want help, there is a link somewhere <laughs> in the description if you want to reach out for some free trainings. We've got loads. But the main objective here isn't for you to ask or for one-to-one -one help with us. You know, sadly, we can't help everybody. The objective here is to educate you. To educate you. So you learn some things to at least get you started. Speaking of which, Kathy Pierce. Kathy Pierce. Look at that lady. Kathy Pierce is a fully qualified physiotherapist. She's been through so much SH1T in her life. She's very sadly lost two husbands. Kathy Pierce would very rarely, very rarely leave the house and struggle with social anxiety. Look at her now. She's back riding a horse and even her sister has joined us and has also had an incredible transformation. I am so proud of you, Kathy. So proud of you. Pretty sure you've lost more than 30 kg based on your post yesterday. And we're still counting. So proud of you. Dawn, this is a perfect example of how Dawn suffered with depression, with PCOS, and these are things that can make it very hard to lose weight sustainably. Hard, but certainly not undoable. Look at her now. Look at her midsection. She never lied down to her limitations. PCOS, underactive thyroid, these are not reasons as to why you can't lose weight sustainably. I want you to be aware of that. Provided the right procedures are put in place, of course you can succeed. Everybody can. Margaret Stone has had two knee replacements. Look at that transformation. Unbelievable. There's actually a video of Margaret in the inner circle of her dancing where she's actually progressed even further than where she is in this photo. So I'm, I'm so proud of you, Margaret. She did Tough Mudder, a charity event with us last year. Two knee replacements and completed an obstacle course. You don't have to do that, guys. It is not compulsory. But getting to meet you guys in person is obviously very important to me. And raising money for charity is very important to us as well. So proud of you, Margaret. Next steps. Use the group. Hit the join button. Use it. There's loads of free trainings in it. I do weight loss clinics every Monday at 7 p.m. Do not miss them. Be there for them. Be there for them. That's really important. If you just do that, you will do so well. They're completely complimentary. Don't sit in your hands. Don't put it off. Delay it. Don't put it off and delay it. Do something about this now. Do not fall into the trap of procrastination. It's very easy to say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow when the diet starts Monday. It's not a diet. Lifestyle change, by the way. What you do now dictates the next 20 years and what they're going to look like. That's so important. And oftentimes we lose sight on that. We move into the motions. We'll be busy being busy. And that's it. And I'm hoping that you've picked up a couple of things in this, at least three, that you found helpful. Our mission is to help one million people live longer and happier lives. And the only way we do that is if you share this. Thanks, everybody. And I really hope this has helped. All the best.